Now, for all of the women that think that this is really, this shoe is not for me. I don't have such a problem. You should know that you should listen to the shoe at least as much as every guy, maybe even more. And the reason why is because, number one, the same initiative, the same evil act, <coughs> according to the Torah, that seems innocent is also not allowed for women. More importantly, 99% of guys don't purely do things based on their imagination. They do things based on something they saw. That's why the Gemara in Masechet Avodah Zarah says, watch your eyes in the morning so you don't come to evil at night. Mephashim say, what is evil? Evil is wasting seed. So anytime a woman walks around immodestly, she should know there's a very good chance that at least one guy is going to look at her. More likely, it's every guy. But let's just give it, let's be conservative. She walks down the street, she wants to go buy a bagel from the kosher store. And she decides that the kosher store that's down the street, it's only 10 minutes from the house, is the perfect one. So she's going to walk in nice high heels to make sure that everybody knows every single step she walks, they can hear her, they can see her, and they can notice her. And she also makes sure that the skirt just barely covers her thighs, let alone doesn't even reach the knees. Or maybe she's going to wear something that's tight enough that you're not going to know if it's her skin or it's pants. We're not really sure. It's just a different color. You can't really tell. Maybe she had a really good suntan. Anyway, she's going to arrive at the store, and along the way, Pablo's and Mikael, and Alexander, and Stevie, and Amos, and Joey, all of them, what are they, they're blind, they see, they see this pretty woman that just looks like she came from uh, Gan Eden, she's walking down the street, and say, ah, look how beautiful you made things for me to see Hashem, they start making brachot for it, they start, all of a sudden, they remember all Masechet brachot, they do brachot for everything they name, everything they enjoy, and they're going to look at her, even if it's for two seconds, three seconds, four seconds. That's just enough time to record her picture in their mind eternally. Not for the week, not for the month, forever. Sefer Hasidim says there are some poskim that say once the guy looks at her and starts imagining things, it's as if he was intimate with her. Like in Shamaim, it's, oh, look, he just made Avira Hashem. What did he do? He was just with her. What? They didn't touch. In Shamaim, they consider as if they touched. The point being, Abutai, now she has Joey looked at her, then Steve, then Pablo's, then Pablo's told everybody else, all the workers that are working construction, everybody looked, two, 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 one after another. It's a domino effect. Everybody saw her go get a bagel. And they can't wait for her to get out after they get the bagel. Now they're going to think about her in the most inappropriate ways, in the most inappropriate times, and every single time they look at her, it's a sin from the Torah, and they create a demon. If they actually go to the point of imagining her during a time where they think that they're doing themselves a favor, they're creating millions of demons. And every single time they create demons, those same amount of demons go into her account they create one one appears right next to her they create two two appear next to her they create a hundred million welcome a hundred million we'll make sure we fit you into the house this rabotai is a very very simple explanation for what the gemara says in masechet chulin page 7b there's not a person that gets an injury on his finger down here without being decided up there meaning a person needs to understand Hashem is so careful with every single move every single thing that happens there is no way on God's green earth that someone could hurt even their finger get little pricked on their finger from the rose he bought for his wife on Friday it's a mitzvah but he got hurt a little bit in Shemaim, there was a whole bedin. They had a whole bedin organized. 
Moshe, Aaron, David, Shlomo, everybody gathered. Okay, we have a judgment. What? We're going to decide right now, very serious judgment. Is he going to get hurt from the rose? And a little blood's going to come out. Yes or no? Favor, favor, favor. Unanimous. Let him do it. Let him get hurt. Meaning, for the rose. Now, I'm not talking about car accidents, robberies, death, sickness. I'm not talking about such big things. We don't have to go so far. We don't have to go so far, Abutai. Something small, the Gemara says. A little blood left his finger. Somebody hit him on the side by accident. Somebody elbowed him by accident. He twisted his ankle. The nail fell off. Tooth hurts a little bit. In Shemaim, there was a whole bedin. They got together and said, guilty. Guilty. For what? Oh, Cheshbon that he has. The accounting that he has in Shemaim. This means, Rabotai, that any time a woman wakes up in the morning on Tisha B'Av, she's depressed, she's annoyed, but nothing really happened yet. She can't find a zivug. She starts seeing there's a lot of hair coming out. She's going bald, but she's only 35. She doesn't know what's happening. Everybody tells her it's stress. The other people tell her, change shampoo. The other people tell her, maybe, maybe it's the sun. No one knows what's going on, but everybody likes to throw their opinion. Because opinions are free. She doesn't know what's going on. All of a sudden, there's something on the side. All of a sudden, the doctor calls and says, please come to my office without giving her an explanation. Then she comes to the office and says, listen, we saw growth. We don't know what it is. We need to investigate it. Life becomes scary. She should know. Before all of that happened, in Shemaim, they had a bedin. Avram, Yitzhak, Yaakov, all of the tzaddikim. What do you think? They just hang out do nothing? They had a bedin. Do we give her something to get scared about or no? So, the Torah tells us that there's no such thing as a righteous person who doesn't sin. Everybody sins. So why does the Torah still call him righteous? If he sins, he should be called a rasha, no? He says, no, no. There's no such thing as a tzaddik shelo yichta. He's righteous, but he sins. So why is he still a tzaddik? Because he doesn't do it on purpose. He's a tzaddik, but he makes sins, but it's not on purpose. Something slipped over here, slipped over there, word came out that's not appropriate, looked somewhere not appropriate a second, and then looked at, he's not doing it on purpose. She's not wearing the immodest clothes on purpose, knowing that Hashem hates it. She's not doing it, she doesn't know. Her mom bought her clothes. She wears the mom, her mom bought her clothes. I went to a playground. Hashem Yechem. You go to a playground, you can't even go. You go to a playground, you start seeing people. Hashem Yechem, you have to go back home. You can only go when there's nobody there. Why? Everybody thinks, everybody forgets their clothes at home. These are the most religious people. And even when they come, you're not even sure you're allowed to be there. Why? Because their six-year-old is barely, barely wearing underwear and a, and a tank top. Even if the mom remembered some of her clothes, the kid forgot the clothes, or the mom didn't buy any clothes. She bought her a tank top that you're supposed to go to sleep with, maybe. And she goes out, she walks around like this. Religious people. Religious people, I saw a couple of people. The father had a longer beard than I think some of the Gdoleado. But his daughter, I don't think that I would let my kids shower with those clothes. Mamas, Rabotai, I don't understand what happened to us. I don't understand what happened to Am Yisrael that we simply forgot that modesty is important. We forgot. Well, we're here to announce once and for all it's important. It's so important that if a woman is not modest, it's impossible for her to go to Gan Eden. Meaning, even if she fulfills all of the mitzvot, Shabbat, Tarat Mishpacha, she eats kosher, Badat, she orders it specially from Israel just to make sure the Shechita is the best, and so on and so forth. If she's not modest, it's impossible for her to enter Gan Eden. And the reason why is because when she arrives to the Bedin of Shemaim, 
all of the victims of her crimes also show up. Who are the victims? Carlos and Stephen and Amos and Pablos and all of the guys that were looking how to go buy a bagel. They also show up. It's like Hashem, you're I'm in Gainom. Why is she going to Ganeden? He says, You're right. Join them. Why? They sinned. They saw you one time for 20 seconds. That was enough for them to sin for 20 years. Even when they were with their wife. So Rabotai Karim, the sin of wasting seed, immodesty, the whole issue that we're supposed to be talking about tonight, the whole issue we're supposed to do tshuva for during these weeks, during our lifetime, during as soon as possible, is as much relevant to women as it is to men. Because we're both partners in the crime. 